Eight them non Grand Arena gates are now open. Yeah, Ben Ruki and I are both accustomed to the Canadian winters and it's similar experience for Omnivore here against a frost mage. He's gonna need a cozy cabin and a nice fire to keep himself warm because trying to move is going to be quite a task. Well, lucky for him, Rosita Jones is a fire mage and might be able to provide some of that comfort as fire mages can do pretty good consistent damage to that frost mage, but it looks like Omnivore is gonna be going after Snuts and good luck honestly with the way Snuts is playing it in Ghost Wolf. The way Ghost Wolf works is it suppresses snares so if Omnivore is snared and Snuts is not he should be able to get away but a good first push here from For Fun. Not combustion used but Rosita Jones did drop the meteor but now Omnivore look at him. I don't think Ellie Mage has a name yet and I want to call it Canadian Cleave because you've got the Resto Druid which is the trees in the forest then you got the Shaman that's the wolves out in the wilderness then you got the Frost Mage that's obviously the snow that, that'd be a good name, right? I feel like you're reaching just a little bit. I'm not bit. reaching like at all. countries would fit into that description. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah probably, yeah. but... How many I'm countries biased. have snow and... <laughs> wolves and trees? <laughs> Siberia, <laughs> Cleave. Pro probably every single one, almost. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's Canadian, Cleave. Okay. Because well, it's cool. We're going to veto that one real quick. The yeah. Omnivore. Oh, wow. Omnivore, once again... He, or actually, Omnivore is going to be playing Gnome, and I think he's going to need all the help he can get, so I think that racial is really strong. I think it's underutilized by a lot of teams and players, especially when they go up against mages, being able to break yourself out of roots. Snuts so actually uh, taking a tremendous amount of damage right now. Cubsy having a difficult time keeping him alive. Gladiator Safeguard does proc. Of the polymorph and Snuts is going to continuously just run away. Whoopi is running Feral Affinity, and Gorecki really showcased it quite effectively in that last series, and I think it's mandatory against double spellcaster even the threat of an elemental shaman that extra added damage can often just be enough for your team to push the other team over the edge although it's not easy to do you have to be weaving into cat form jumping into the fight getting your damage out then immediately retreating back to the pillar before they switch to you otherwise you will just get decimated and snuts has experience in the last cup against this feral affinity whoopi is much less experienced on druid overall and might get caught here He's hugging the pillar for dear life, but if Snuts can close in with the rest of the Stormkeeper, big lightning bolt. Whoopi loses out on that frenzied regeneration from Guardian Affinity, so he can't immediately reset his own health, and he's taking quite a blast in from the Super Frogs. Yeah, this is not the spot you want to be in. Wealthy Man just dropping Blizzard and Frozen Orb on your team. Luckily for Whoopi, he has Innervate, but Wealthy, Wealthy Man Kleptomania is that immediately. He says, give me that spell. And now Whoopi's going to have to expend his own mana, not free of charge to keep his team alive. But For Fun has managed to stabilize in this matchup. Omnivore pushing midfield once again. Again, looking for a little bit of damage and the feral affinity from whoopee that is a difficult talent to pull off we'll have to see Whoa. if they can make it work omnivore getting bursted down iron bark gets traded out by whoopee who really hasn't been able to drink in this matchup he's trying to push in and pressure cubsy but cubsy's the one he's been able to escape he's been able to drink to full and this is looking good for super frogs yep good composition in game one from the super frogs they're obviously watching for fun's previous competition with omnivore and rosita playing this fire mage arms warrior even last year as well so it was an expected blind pick from them they lock in the elemental shaman and the frost mage both with tons of stuns and snares to prevent an arms warrior from going anywhere and now he's caught in center field and looking for a storm bolt trying to connect some damage with that sharpened blade combo together with combustion Big hit there onto Wealthy Man, and Cubsy likely needs to respond. No, Wealthy Man with some effective kiting, just avoiding the damage, and Cubsy easily recovers. Whoopi now in the back line in cat form, and likely actually going for a drink himself, and that's a smart move when your team creates pressure. The other team is going to try and run away. While they run away, they can't stop you from drinking, but Whoopi did not actually ultimately get that much mana back from that attempt, so Cubby, Cubsy has a significant lead. Yep, Omnivore just tanking a lot of this damage, but the problem is Omnivore with limited uptime in the matchup with how much damage he's taking right now He can survive but in dampening Luffy's gonna have to use a lot of mana to keep him stable as he just eats Frostbolt after Frostbolt in this matchup now going after wealthy man Who's happy to just kite him around the map quite easily Rosita Jones now looking for a little bit of damage as he connects some fireballs and polymorphs on snuts 
Omnivore manages to find his way with the Wealthy Man for a little bit here. Cubsy actually just throwing out some Solar Wrath to increase his team's damage. Comfortably sitting at a healthy amount of mana. Whoopi falling behind. They just need to stop Whoopi's mana. Keep attacking Omnivore. Deny Rosita Jones from getting crowd control and stop Whoopi from drinking. That is what Super Frogs has to do to claim victory in this game. Yep, stall-based composition. Best strategy is to stall the game. Focus on the easiest target, which in this case is the Arms Warrior due to his limited Mobility versus a Frost Mage and Elemental Shaman. It's up to Omnivore to really find some opportunities here in Dampening. He can combo Sharpen Blade with Whoopi's Feral Affinity and the Combustion of Rosita Jones. With that triple threat, they may have enough damage to actually get a kill, but they have to make it deeper into Dampening and then set up that connection while still being under fire by the Super Frogs. And it is definitely not going to be easy for them overall in game number one. It's the lower bracket. Both these teams face elimination but Super Frogs are definitely the dominant team in the lower bracket, and I'm expecting to see them advance to face Method Orange on Championship Sunday. Yeah, Wealthy Man with his Icy Veins looking to get aggressive in this game. Iron Bark going to be used by Whoopi. His mana is not doing great, and at 6% dampening, he's going to have to stay in the fight for longer. Good crowd control on Snuts and Cubsy. Interrupt on Wealthy Man as Rosita Jones and Omnivore turning their attention on him. Yeah, most certainly. Wealthy Man, this is where we want to see for fun forcing ice blocks from the mage, just as dampening sets in, so that when we get into the deep end, he doesn't have any ice blocks to trade and go immune to damage and just falls over. Omnivore constantly under pressure, but despite that, tackling through it, going after Snuts with Maledix flying forward. Snuts takes a huge hit, but Cubsy's got his back. Whoopi somewhere on the map in cat form, not actually getting a drink. That elemental from the elemental shaman, that fire rock elemental chasing Whoopi keeps him in combat and stops him from drinking. That's a nice move by Snuts going after that primal elementalist talent and sending that elemental to do the duty of babysitting Whoopi and denying his drinks. Definitely a good talent choice. Whoopi's going to be stuck in combat. And a Rosita Jones with the combustion available does have damage for his teams. Ready soon. Full stun now on Snuts as they look to find some pressure in this matchup. Whoopi actually forced to use the Iron Bark in that exchange. And as dampening gets higher, this damage is going to become more and more significant from Wealthy Man and Snuts. Lightning Lasso now going to be used to prevent a little bit of damage and keep them locked in place. Actually, it wasn't the Lightning Lasso. Um, it was just the additional damage that's going to be used with that Thunderstorm. Rosita Jones taking some burst. Omnivore still caught in midfield. Polymorph spam from Rosita Jones. Really just trying to slow down this damage from Wealthy Man and Snuts and buy Whoopi a little bit of time to sit down and drink. And he's actually doing that right now, which is ultra important. If he can regenerate his mana completely, he didn't... I don't, wasn't able to get all of it, but a little bit of mana regen. All of it. That's not very much. Cubsy's still massively ahead here in game number one, and they definitely won the comp pick in this blind pick matchup. It's elimination time here today on Saturday. We got this series and one after. We might be sending Method Orange home. We could even be sending Super Frogs home and for fun have any surprises in store. Deep and dampening. If you're just tuning in, you don't want to go anywhere. Some of your favorites battle it out to stay alive. Yeah, Whoopi once again forced to use the bark to get another swap coming in from Wealthy Man and Snuts. Good control from Rosita Jones, looking to stall out the game. Combustion available. Once again, I believe Rosita Jones is playing the Firestarter Flame Cannon build, so the Fireball spams are going to allow him to reset his combustion and get significant damage off consistently throughout the game. But at 22% dampening, the Warrior Fire Mage, all they need is one good offensive push to potentially close out the game. We saw how low Snuts got early on. If Omnivore can actually manage to keep some uptime, if he can hold on to the Avatar as well as basically everything else, with the escape artist. They might be able to take Snuts down. This might be the push they're looking for. Snuts getting a little bit low. Combustion. Maledix flying in as well. Omnivore drops the war banner as he's looking to chase down Snuts. They pulled out quite a bit. The astral shift and the uh, gladiator safeguard. So Snuts manages to survive, but that was a good push there. If Rosita Jones can reset his combustion fast enough by spamming out Fireball, they might be able to have one more attempt on Snuts. Cubsy still sitting healthy on mana and Iron Bark. Omnivore rotting down low. Whoopi going for drinks, but Wealthy Man and Snuts, they just have way too much pressure on Omnivore to really allow that. 
Yeah, most certainly they do. But looking at that mana bar for Whoopi, and I'm looking to say that it's not too good for, for fun here in game number one. Whoopi has now managed actually to sneak away, sitting in stealth and no one actually denying his drink. He was able to drink and actually get ahead. I completely counted him out, but Super Frogs just threw that advantage completely to the wind. Yep. <laughs> Your rhymes are killing me today, man. Yeah, Wait, the, is it the rhymes? The Super Frogs are looking super pog. <laughs> the four fun is going on a run. Yeah, Omnivore now caught into the lightning lasso of Snuts. Still doing a good job controlling him. Whoopi manages to find some heals. Avatar does get traded out by Omnivore, but once again, for the Warriors, it's just so difficult in this matchup to really have a high amount of uptime. They have to find these all-in pushes. With the Maledict, Rosita Jones uses the Combustion, but really not forcing too much on the Snuts. He's just playing very defensive now. Has the Astral Shift back up. Cubs, he gets caught into the Rake Stun by Whoopi, who activates the Scenario Ward on Omnivore, still just allowing him to get a little bit aggressive. But now, this is what is so difficult. Omnivore, now that he's caught in the oh. midfield, is getting destroyed by damage. Whoopi has to use the Iron Bark. It's just way too much burst. Ha heal over time effects aren't going to be able to carry him for much longer. And the truth is, Whoopi's going to be expending so much mana to keep Omnivore aggressive in this situation with how much damage he's just basically soaking up. He's like a sponge. Innovate now fading from Whoopi. And now, the, without the free cost of the heals, it's going to become more difficult for him to keep Omnivore alive. If you're not sure who Rosita Jones is, then you definitely didn't tune in to BlizzCon's past. He was the Titan Slayer. He took out former Method Triforce multi-BlizzCon champion team. So, if there was a team to take down a Titan, it would be for fun. The one-hit wonder. Let's see if Super Frogs commit a blunder here, moving deep into Daphne. <laughs> you got to stop. <laughs> All right, Rosita Jones building up the combustion 20 seconds left on that still just spamming out the fireballs gets interrupted and Rosita Jones could actually be a decent target moving forward as well if he's just sitting out in the midfield although snuts and wealthy man's main objective is just to avoid omnivore if Rosita Jones is midfield they can pressure him quite a bit and now there's multiple pressure points omnivore caught into the bash iron bark does get used omnivore of course does have as die by the sword as well to limit some damage. One Maledict gets used on Omnivore. Snuts gets stunned up, but Super Frogs are looking so healthy in this matchup. But big burst damage coming in from Rosita Jones. Huge. Snuts needs to respond. The Astral Shift was used, Iron Bark as well. Snuts still just trying to kite away. Wealthy Man, he just spams up the polys. Although Omnivore is the main target, they realize the only way For Fun wins this is in these big burst windows. So if they can stall out those big burst windows, that is their win condition in this matchup. Eventually, they will take down Omnivore. They don't need to continue the pressure. It's not that big of a deal to spam up the poly and actually heal up Omnivore. Whoopi's man is actually doing quite well. I think he actually sat down for a drink during that exchange. So that was really nicely done. Good time. I mean, that definitely keeps more fun in it. Snuts is making it look like Omnivore is his dinner, just playing with his food. Omnivore isn't able to make it to his target, although Rosita Jones is carrying the damage right now. Potentially an opportunity here as Omnivore looks to set up and maybe close this out at almost 50% dampening. Snuts denies it, moves away once again as there's no snare. Bladestorm makes Omnivore immune to it so he can stay on target and try to gun Snuts down, but unable to ultimately connect that cone of Cole just makes him move so slow. He wants to get there so badly. He's got cooldowns to trade for a push, but he can't get enough uptime to really take anybody out. Now at 50% dampening, Whoopi still has a mana lead. Rosita Jones, huge meteor connects, but Omnivore is bashed up in midfield. Wealthy Man is raining down terror, and Omnivore has basically not much. I mean, the cooldowns are there, but he doesn't have any healing. We're at 52% healing reduction even after these recent changes and Whoopi is still just going at it. Snuts finally taking some hits here as Rosita Jones basically has to solo carry. Whoopi sets up maybe for a kill here. Break stun into Cyclone and Cubsy. Maledict Stormbolt on Snuts. Crowd control looks good. If Forfun can do that again, I actually think Snuts may go down. Yep, Cubsy had to drink it out. There's a full bash on the Snuts. Polymorph on Wealthy Man. Any crowd control on Cubsy. This could be the game, but Omnivore in a lot of trouble. Activates the Avatar. Lightning Lasso 
comes in from Snuts. Omnivore trinkets out of that immediately. He does not want to mess around with that percentage-based damage at this point in the game. And Snuts is almost in execute range. I don't know if Cubsy's going to be able to recover this. Luckily, Wealthy Man coming in clutch with the Polymorphs on Rosita Jones, slowing down those fireballs. Whoopi pushes in. Break stun uh -huh. on to Cubsy. Snuts getting low. Omnivore could be in some trouble. There's a cyclone on Cubsy. Uh -huh. And Snuts might actually fall. Rosita Jones spamming out the fire spells, trying to keep him down. Omnivore reconnects just for a second. Snuts just in Ghost Wolf the last five minutes of this game, just kiting away, trying to survive while Melty Man carries the damage. Finally, Whoa. first here coming from Snuts. Omnivore getting lower. Doesn't want to wait too long to trade out the dive by the sword. Gladiator Safeguard does proc, but he wants to hold on to it. Wealthy Man trying to solo down Omnivore in this situation. The Snuts and Cubs are just so far away. Omnivore charges in for the kill, gets punted away by Snuts. Now Omnivore switching targets. Wealthy Man, he blinks away. Omnivore's got nobody to hit, and that's a very sad warrior in midfield currently at 61% dampening, desperately trying to make his way to a target, but with Maledic soaking up the healing, there's nothing left for four fun super frogs tap them out having a fire mage backing you up when you do is a lot better uh, than uh, just having a frost mage snaring him because the free the elemental is going to be free casting in that case and that's going to be very very scary i mean there's basically two priority targets between both wealthy man and snuts they're both ranged omnivore is the only melee in the game and in a game with five other caster ranged classes you don't want to be the only melee especially when one of them is a frost mage you're just gonna be snared up the entire time snuts will stun you and punch you away with lightning lasso this composition was crafted to counter omnivore smart decisions by the super frogs and unless for fun can pull out a huge chunk of damage with that sharpened blade combined together actually not running sharpened blade omnivore Omnivore is it's a very interesting decision. I, I was thinking Sharpen Blade's the only way that they can find a kill, but he's actually decided to drop it. I'm wondering what he's picked up instead. Yeah, that's definitely a little bit peculiar. Sharpen Blade, normally a staple talent choice for arms warriors, but maybe they figure they're going to be getting into such deep dampening that Sharpen Blade is kind of irrelevant at that point. Yeah. At, when you're at 60% dampening, how effective is Sharpen Blade? Well, the answer is very effective, but still. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you don't necessarily need it and would rather have something else throughout the game. What do you think about Fury Warrior? Uh, it takes too much damage, I think. think you so? lose the de defensive stance, I mean, you get more But uptime. you move. Yeah, you get to move, but in dampening as well, the, the self-healing of the Fury Warrior just... I don't think it's enough. You don't think they can close out the game sooner by having high uptime on a Frost Mage? I don't think so. It's a Frost Mage backed up by a Resto Druid. The healing of the Resto Druid is super, super high. And as long as the Cubsy gets to sneak off for those drinks, the game will go to dampening. If you have a Fury Warrior or a Death Knight or a Windwalker, I don't think it matters that much. Watching Omnivore move around, it's like he's playing a duck virtual simulator just waddling to his target. And Bajira is crying somewhere. <laughs> Bajira's tears start to drip from his eyes. Omnivore just can't connect. Rosita's getting pressured in this frost. He's going to lose a lot of the bounce that fire brings. He's not going to be able to move around the map and dish out damage at the same time. I can't help but feel that this is a, a desperation move to try and see if it works, but I don't think it's going to. Yeah, like we kind of talked about, it's just what were they thinking? What does Frost Mage have? that the Fire Mage doesn't. You have snares, but that doesn't really help. Omnivore has a snare. The problem is Wealthy Man can just blink around in this matchup and get away, keep Omnivore in roots during this game, and Rosita Jones on the Frost Mage is going to be more susceptible to damage as well. It's also more difficult to get off his damage, um, at least as the Fire Mage you're consistently building up the Fire Blast when you spam out the Fireball. Gives you some instant cast punch later on. Well, the, the Frost Mage, even when he's left free, he's not really going to do much. So uh, we, we like to talk about having multiple high threat targets. And Omnivore is for sure a good target for uh -oh. Super Frogs. And Omnivore getting bursted down there. Sorry to cut you off. His Iron Bark was forced out, went down to around 10% HP. Good burst damage from Wealthy Man. Yeah, so uh, as I was saying, uh, Omnivore is the preferred target for Super Frogs. When Omnivore is being targeted, who would you rather have, a Frost Mage or a Fire Mage? 
the fire mage is the answer for sure because the fire mage is just gonna always be able to dish out that consistent damage and we see a little swap to snots he's gonna be deflecting that with the thunderstorm and then omnivore is going to try to just reach anybody at this point but you can see already the, the mana from whoopi way lower rosita jones has been getting chunked down time and time again <laughs> Just not providing look, too much, really. Look at Omnivore, just hiding at the center pillar, hoping somebody <laughs> comes to play, but he just can't get anywhere if he tries to chase down a target. Now Lightning last one. Maledict, oh, huge bro. damage! He tried to make something happen and just gets disappearing slowly but surely from the match. Another Maledict to soak up even more healing. We're not even into dampening. Cycloned at low health, basically bad manner at this point. They need to get Omnivore out of there, man. This isn't gonna work with a warrior. Yeah, and Rosita Jones on the Frost Mage just cannot provide the same amount of counter pressure as a Fire Mage, and that's what we were talking about, and the reason we sort of criticized this pick coming in for fun. Maybe late game they can make something work, but they literally just got every single cooldown from Omnivore. They got Rally and Cry. They got the Dive of the Sword. They got Iron Bark from Whoopi. Whoopi's almost doomed. Cubsy's full mana. Uh, Super Frog just has everything going in their favor. Lightning Lasso, waiting for this hit. Snuts is actually counterspelled, waiting to just chuck out two gigantic lightning bolts. One lightning bolt, two lightning bolts. Where are you gonna go, Omnivore? You're stuck in midfield. You're gonna leap back to the pillar and hide? Well, your druid doesn't have very much mana. You, you've got no option but to chase down a target that you just can't catch. You don't have any options, Omnivore. He's trying to retreat back to the room, but his death is an inevitability at this point. Well, the one thing they got going for them is that they can abuse the map. As I say that, they're swapping off the Whoopi. <laughs> yes, the Whoopi getting bursted down. Cyclone coming in from Cubsy as well. Dampening has just kicked in, and the pressure from Super Frogs is so much higher in this game as they're just not scared of Rosita Jones' free cast of damage. At least in the last game when they were on Omnivore kiting him around, Rosita Jones was creating these moments of opportunity with the fireball spam, with the talent choices that he had, but now it's just a completely different story. Perhaps they're hoping that the Super Frogs come in the room and stack up and then Rosita can get a triple Frozen Orb, but if you're Super Frogs, you just put Snuts on one side, Wealthy Man on the other, and at least one of you gets to attack the entire time without stacking up. I'm not sure if this is going to work for them. Well, the triangle formation is harder to pull off for sure on Black Rook, but all they need to really do is stop Whoopi from drinking as long as Snuts keeps dipping in there and does exactly this with Shane Lightnings and maybe drops a few Earthquakes down there. We're not going to see Whoopi being able to drink. And as I said uh, that, they uh, force out his Trinket. They bash him on his Trinket. Yeah, Whoopi getting lower. Vortex there. Cubsy pushing in. Whoopi really getting punished for playing that Feral Affinity. No Frenzied Regeneration going to be available as he dispels one Maledict. Cubsy looking for a Cyclone to pause his HP. Whoopi with a nice Bash Cyclone of his own. Now Wealthy Man taking a little bit of burst damage, but the control from Wealthy Man too great. Rosita Jones not able to get out any additional damage. Omnivore charges over to Snuts and just gets <laughs> swatted away. <laughs> Time out in Omnivore's room here. He's <laughs> just, he's been grounded basically by his dad, the Super Frogs. He's just not allowed to get out there and do anything at the moment. Now Whoopi under fire as Super Frogs constantly switch their attention to multiple targets. Ray of Frost being channeled here currently onto Snuts by Rosita, but not generating any semblance of damage whatsoever. Whoopi and Omnivore now both in timeout and grounded by the Super Frogs as all three of them try to figure out how to make something work. And I don't really see any options. They don't have enough lockdown. The composition that Super Frogs have brought has too much disruption for them to look for crowd control kill windows. Maybe a deep dampening feral affinity all in on Cubsy. But even that, that's a reach. Yeah, that's definitely a reach. Blizzard's going to be dropped out by a wealthy man. He's putting Blizzard on one side, Frozen Orb on the other. Whoopi looking for a drink, but there's no hope. There's no way he's going to get a drink in this matchup. There has to be an offensive push at some point for, for fun. But one of the problems with the Frost Mage as well is Snuts is going to be a little run away from a lot of the damage Rosita Jones has. If he builds up his Frozen Orb, he tries to Common Storm and Ice Nova, Snuts, if he's just running away, he's going to be able to avoid a lot of that burst damage, and then the damage kind of runs out. Rosita Jones now getting interrupted. Oh. Whoopi getting caught into the cap stun as Snuts moves in. Wealthy Man drops a Frozen Orb. Omnivore, Whoopi, and Rosita Jones, all three are rotting down. And Think about how Cubsy's feeling this game. He's chilling He's out. He's chilling this entire day. Just sitting back, Cubsy enjoying. Has, literally this entire day, Cubsy has not even been on screen and wins <laughs> the game. He just sits 80 yards away, keeps up his hots, keeps drinking. There's no harm to be brought to him. He's brought in these wizard compositions with the Destruction Warlock and the Elemental Shaman and the Frost Mage. 
finally some counter pressure, but it's mostly due to the fact that Snuts is actually just trying to attack rather than play safe. As soon as he starts playing safe, he easily recovers. Potential damage here from the team. Super Frog's Whoopi is really struggling to heal through this. That Maledix is healing so much. It's absorbing so much healing. Whoopi can just fall over. He's running Feral up and he's got no way to bounce back into the fight. He's desperately just moved to midfield to try and maybe crowd control Cubsy, and Cubsy's just gonna backpedal a couple of steps and avoid any crowd control, and Super Frogs have him in a chokehold. Rosita Jones used his ice block there as well. It's just a matter of time. This blizzard damage, the frozen orb damage is gonna really add up, and this is one of the most hopeless matchups I've seen in this tournament so oh, the far. Is literally jumping trying to clear stacks. It's like, <laughs> oh, I hope this works. Yeah, this is just, this is a nightmare situation for fun. <laughs> uh, I think the composition didn't work out for them nearly as well as the fire mage. It just seems like they do not know what they want to do offensively. They could just be holding out oh. for one last offensive push, but Rosita Jones forced into the ice block. Wealthy man pushing in. Cubsy still has 100% mana. Iron Bark, Wealthy Man, both Ice Blocks, snuts every cooldown. Now, Super Frog's pushing in with a bash onto Whoopi. He's forced to Barskin. Rosita Jones still not topped off as he's a great target getting lower. Wealthy Man looking to close out the game as he blinks in, taking a decent amount of pressure. But keep in mind, that's just because of how offensive he's playing. If he just sits back, and enjoys the ride, plays it slow. I don't think Super Frogs can lose this. This is definitely not a ride that Omnivore wants to take again. I really want to see them substitute him out or change their composition. Even if Fury Warrior's less tanky, something that lets Omnivore attack because he spent the better part of 10 minutes in this game just sitting next to a wall praying that something dies on the other team. He can't really do anything else. I've never seen a more one-sided match at least this year between these two teams. If Four Fun manages to pull this together it's nothing short Ooh. of a miracle that Snuts vortex getting caught in the room but immediately retreating back outside to safety and with whoopy tapped on mana rosita completely out of ice blocks it's just a matter of time yeah he blinks away that's going to be double maledict from super frog whoopy trying to deny the kill with the iron bark manages to do so but you look at his mana look at him try to cross the map right now if he can oh. for a drink that's going to be good but look at cubs he's like nope nope not going to happen full back looking for a cyclone potentially whoopee trinkets out rosita jones very vulnerable as whoopee crosses the map that means rosita jones is going to have to do the same thing and wealthy men and snuts <laughs> are going to be able to have their way with rosita jones cubsy manages to land the full whoop or the full cyclone on whoopee rosita jones caught into the lightning lasso and it was just a matter of time snuts here midfield interrupts the polymorph whoopee nothing left in the tank I, I just, this is just such a bad matchup for four, four fun. Super Frogs played it out perfectly, doing exactly what they needed to do. They're not, I mean, four fun hasn't lost yet, but it's just a matter of time. They haven't they lost have. yet. Yeah, they did. Uh, yeah. Yeah. When they picked Omnivore on Arms Warrior, they then, lost. Yeah, then, like, four Frogs just need one more to take this series and send four fun home. Yep, and we'll have to see what Rosita Jones and Whoopi decide to do, but. I think it's more than likely they do sit on Wealthy Man as that is the target that is going to be the most punishing. Like if they get on Wealthy Man, they're going to limit his damage by the most. If they sit on Snuts, that still leaves Wealthy Man free to go for Polymorphs on Original and push in and build up a lot of consistent damage. Currently for fun, staying at the pillar here. Maybe they're going to go for some death grip strategies, pull Wealthy Man around the corner, stun lock him and try and burst him down. Currently they are on match point as Super Frogs have asserted dominance throughout the day, taking out the move and now looking to take out for fun 3-0 in advance in the lower bracket to make a run at redemption to try and take that first place spot once again that they got in Cup 1. For fun, obviously looking to throw a wrench in that plan, but unable to connect. And this is not typical for Windwalker Death Knight to be playing so defensive, but when you're on match point, I can't really blame them for being cautious. I didn't like that push at all. They ended up m moving into midfield. Both Loopy and Rosita Jones ended up using their Maledix and then just running away. Maybe they're just trying to play the long game, grip and snuts. Um, if they can stop Cubsy from drinking, that might be a viable strap. But right now, Cubsy is going to be sitting down looking for a drink. Original is falling a little bit behind on mana. It's see snuts and wealthy man keeping him at bay. I think it's a little bit of a coincidence that there's a bunch of chickens running around the pillar that the <laughs> yeah. is running away the entire game with. It's like they're mocking the team at this point in the fight. They're on match point though here. Super Frogs lead 2-0. Can Original substitute in on that Shaman be the X Factor for his team? 
I, I just feel like in dampening, Rosita Jones is disadvantaged. His death strike is so much weaker. Uh, waiting for dampening, I'm not sure if it's the right decision. We saw this strategy, this exact same strategy, uh, implemented by uh, the Windwalker DK earlier, and the result was essentially that the Windwalker DK eventually just lost to that damage behind that pillar. And this pillar is also a very small pillar, so you're not really going to be able to utilize it too much if you just stay behind there and try to grip someone in and stun them. Uh, I actually think it was against Super Frogs, uh, the boys versus Super Frogs, I believe, where they just grip people behind the pillar dampening went to about 60 70 percent and then eventually the windwalker dk lost um i want to see a different strategy here i want to see a all-in push onto someone like wealthy man uh, before original just loses that mana edge completely because as it is right now original is slowly going to lose his mana cubs is going to get to drink as much as possible dampening is going to be so high that the blizzard and the orb damage and the stormkeeper damage is going to be too high for them to do anything as we see wealthy man shove another orb behind there and it's not slowed up another stormkeeper with chain lightnings yep so one thing that's happening in this matchup loopy's going to be moving forward maybe they want to just reposition i guess to a new pillar but one thing I'm noticing in this game is Snuts and Wealthy Man are really doing a great job at shutting down Whoopi's damage. As the Windwalker Monk, your main moment of burst is going to be with your Storm, Earth, and Fire, and that Fist of Fury. So what's happening? They grip in Snuts, they stun him. Whoopi summons Storm, Earth, and Fire, goes for a Fist of Fury, and Snuts saves his Thunderstorm for that moment, knocking away the Storm, Earth, and Fire, and then Wealthy Man is actually noving them far away. And once those images are caught into a Nova, there's no way for them to get out. They don't get the trinket, they don't get Tiger's Lust, and that really limits and hurts the burst a Windwalker Monk can do. So intelligent plays by Super Frogs, especially as they are going for this stall tactic, it's one of the best things they can do to stay in the game longer. Great coordination between the Frogs. They are definitely super here in this series. They stalled out Omnivore for two games in a row to the point where he just decided, I'm going on the bench. I do not want to be kited. I'll just simply exit the arena at this point and allow my team to try and carry me for the rest of this series. The composition that the Super Frogs have crafted is quite effective at dismantling melee classes and even still substituting in the Windwalker for the Warrior doesn't seem to be giving four fun that much of an edge and once again super frogs have him in a chokehold i honestly believe and this is just my take on the match that for fun is giving what? super frogs way too much respect in terms of the damage that they can do frost mage damage isn't that significant if you're just sitting on them they can actually make an offensive push on wealthy man get some pressure burn cubsy's mana but doing this every time they grip in snuts he's gonna be fine look at him he's barely taking any damage he just walks away and in the meantime, Original is just eating a full frozen orb, a blizzard wealthy man, serving up a nice cold serving of snow to these two. Okay, that was bad. I, every time I hear <laughs> it, be worse than Sid's last <laughs> line. These uh, frogs are looking super <laughs> Elliot. You get a free pass. I, I swear the chickens in this arena just clucking the whole time. I'm surprised that the chat isn't just filled with buck, 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 buck. Because it keeps. Well, there keeps goes the chat. It. It's got everybody banned, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Don't spam, chat. Don't spam. <laughs> All right. 2% dampening. Obviously, for fun, they feel like they have an advantage in late game. And maybe what. I mean, this is one strategy I'm considering. Maybe they just want to have Original hold on to his mana as long as possible. So they can do a purge all in. So they want to have Original be 80, 90, 100% mana. So he has enough gas in the tank to throw the purge button down over and over and over on snuts as they try to run him down limiting cubsy's healing output and maybe that's a win condition that they have but i just don't know if it's going to happen well we've already seen this strategy implemented and what happens is you slowly but surely the Windwalker DK just dies to the pressure before it even gets to that point. They're going to start having to use their defensives just to actually survive. And Whoopi's going to need his touch of karma to chase out in the open when dampening is high, especially. So I just don't see that strategy working at all. Uh, they're essentially just waiting for their demise here. I think what they should be doing is go on Wealthy Man, chase him, all in him with those triple maledicts, try to force out one of those ice blocks, then maybe retreat for a little bit, and then go out again. 
again, do it again. That way you're at least forcing out those five minute cooldowns. At best here, you're gonna force out a one and a half minute cooldown in that Astro Shift from uh, Snut. Cubs is gonna have his Iron Rock to fall back on uh, whenever he wants to. Cubs, he can drink whenever he wants to. You just never put yourself in a situation where you're actually gonna be able to win the game. You, you just don't have a clear win condition by doing what For Fun here is doing. And as I say that, they're finally going after Welcome. And now when he blinks away, I wanna see them chase him but they don't. Yeah, I, I think an important thing, too, that you start to mention is <laughs> is the for fun win condition. Maybe it is not that blurry. Maybe it is a clear win condition, but it seems like one that they have to get to a critical point in dampening, a critical mass of dampening for it to actually work. And the comp itself doesn't seem to live long enough to actually get there. It's like they're trying to get a neighborhood and they don't have enough gas in the tank to actually make that trek. Well, it just comes down to you have to force out all of these big cooldowns in dampening then and you are the melee cleave you're the ones who are limited you're the ones who are on the clock whoa 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, astral shift gets forced out original left in the midfield whoopie trying to keep him alive wealthy man blinks in that's a scary moment for original in the match as he camps out in ghost wolf looking to regenerate his health you cannot be doing that as for fun. You have to be really careful. Super Frog's able to dump so much damage. They have it all stored up. Now Wealthy Man blinking in, feeling maybe overconfident. He needs to get out of there and stick back to his original game plan. As much as that go did pressure original, though, he doesn't have to lose his link, and he still gets to hold on to all that juicy mana inside the tank. Goes into Ghost Wolf, lets that do the work for him. He lets that pack spirit do the healing. Whoopi now going to be the target of the pressure because it seems like Super Frogs want to be the only team that ever even and put their toe on the gas pedal. It's not looking too good here for For Fun. Basically, the strategy that Vinruki outlined earlier is the only thing that it even makes sense logically. Original wants to save his mana to use Purge, which removes Restoration Druid heal over time effects, but it costs a lot of mana. So For Fun basically do nothing to limit the amount of damage they take, conserve the most amount of mana they can for as long as they possibly can. That's the so dumbest that Venn diagram I've ever seen. Deep in dampening, they can go for a kill. This was just a precautionary measure for the Storm keeper but not uh, hey, for wealthy man's icy veins wait. which is, is still available they dropped earthen shield totem and earthen shield it's, yeah, earthen it's, shield it's mistakes okay but they've been having a rough series so let's let's give them some slack all right Rosita jones using the anti-magic shell as well as originally gets caught in midfield i don't even know why oh the no is. the link spirit link gets dropped out it's not so the beautiful knock out of that so unfortunately that thunderstorm will prevent original from getting the full healing value but he does manage to survive and I'm honestly, I don't know why they're even crossing pillars at this point. Every time they cross pillars, Whoopi, Touch of Karma, Original Trinket, Spirit Link, Astral Shift, every single button. I think they're a little bit too afraid of Blizzard. If they wait 10 minutes to execute on this strategy that I was trying to outline and they so rudely interrupted by taking too much damage, if they don't actually initiate this after 10 minutes, I am going to be the most disappointing, I think, disappointed that I think that ever that I've been. I can't even say sentences at this point. Snuts has got the pin down. Wealthy Man's around the other side. They wrap back and forth, but they're just taking damage on two fronts and at dampening 30%. No cooldowns left. Lightning Lasso almost fully channeled into that primal earth elemental totem as well. For fun are running out of time. They gotta make something happen. At this point, too, keep in mind Cubsy is actually just just doing his nails, just filing in his nails <laughs> right now, waiting for something to happen. Just saying, what's the T? Oh, at here it this is. Moment, here's the go. Here's the push on Snuts. Touch of death gets used. Cubsy, how are you going to respond? Snuts is gonna be trying to rely on those frost mage snares. Now, Whoopi, no touch of karma. Diffuse magic does get used, but it looks like Snuts is going to be okay. Wealthy Man has to back him up just a little bit. Interrupt now on original. Whoopi, a very vulnerable target, but now that he teleports away, Transcendence is behind the pillar. The kill has been lost on Snuts, although Cubsy's mana, he used so much mana there to keep Snuts alive. He's down to 40%, looking for a drink. If he gets this drink off, Super Frogs, it's looking like a sealed game. Yep, but he didn't. The problem is when they stay at the pillar so much, they actually just have to use their defensives just to survive this Blizzard, Excellent. Frozen Orb, Stormkeeper combo that we keep seeing. And when they don't have those defensives, they can't push up. Like now, Rosita Jones doesn't have his AMS, his anti-magic shell. It's gonna be hard for him to connect on a target. Same thing, uh, Whoopi actually has his karma now, so now they need to push. They need to chase Snuts until they get something. Yeah, but Snuts doing a good job. Lightning Lasso denies. Rosita Jones getting lower. He uses the anti-magic zone, but now he's just pinned in midfield. Snuts uses the Stormkeeper to get There's additional damage. 
You can see Cubsy gets a massive drink there. Wealthy Man sells both ice blocks. Rosita Jones getting lower. No anti-magic zone. No anti-magic shell. Earthen Shield Totem gets dropped, but at this point in damp dampening, Rosita Jones and Whoopi don't want to be sitting in that as they get Vortex back on Whoopi's Ride the Wind. Wealthy Man needs to kite away from that as Whoopi and Rosita Jones Whoa. are getting full value. Counter spell on original. Rosita Jones trying to keep himself alive with the Death Strike with the anti magic whoa, whoa, whoa. spell. Where Big is this? first on Wealthy Man. You cannot be being that greedy at this point in the game. Wealthy Man comes out immediately looking to close out the game, feeling very confident with the Iron Bar Cubs he has available. Two seconds, one second, but a full polymorph denies the Spirit Link totem. Super Frogs completely cripple for fun and kick him to the curb. They're performance I would say is outstanding the feed versus the fake zebras we're all tied up one and one who is going to find themselves on match point who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament keep in mind folks we're doing a brand new thing you have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in battle for Azeroth 